Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, in the New King James Version. And the word of the Lord says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just want to share with you from this thought. Developed in the darkness. Developed in the darkness. Let us pray. Here we're reading about the announcement of the Virgin Mary's motherhood. A mother is a child's first teacher. A mother is a comforter, a protector, a counselor, a tear wiper, a scratch kisser, a nourisher. A mother is literally the heart of a family. And many of us whose mothers have gone on to glory, we know that once mama goes, the family is just never quite the same. Often the siblings even can tend to drift apart a little bit because the centerpiece of the family is missing. I think you ought to thank God for mothers. Everybody doesn't feel that they've had a wonderful mother. But if you're here, she could have aborted you. So however you felt she was as a mother in the raising you or in the not raising of you, we still got a reason to thank God for a mother. Amen, somebody. I'm trying to avoid thinking too much about mine because I want to preach instead of crying. Amen. <laughs> but before a mother can be any of these things, a mother is first an incubator. Before she can hug the baby, she got to first have them. She's got to be an incubator first. Before she can teach the children, she's got to house them and prepare them to come out into the world first. She's got to be an incubator. A mother takes the immaterial substance given by the father and grows it into something tangible. The miracle of motherhood. Thusly revealing the majesty of womanhood and the divine design of human beings. I didn't plan to talk about this part, but here it is. It betrays the truth 
that God did not design it to be Adam and Steve. Because <clears throat> Adam and Steve can both supply substance, but nobody can incubate. Ah. And it can't be Eve and Eva. Because two incubators with no substance can produce nothing. So we have to hold to the divine design. God made a man for a woman and a woman for a man. And only by following his divine design can you produce the child. Amen, somebody. She takes what's given to her by the father and turns it into something palpable, turns it into something tangible, something physical, amen, something of value. It made me think of a Proverbs 31 virtuous woman. For a virtuous woman doesn't destroy the seed, but cultivates it and develops it into something productive and fruitful. Uh, if you go and study Proverb 31, you find out that the virtuous woman doesn't just sit at home and twiddle her thumbs and watch all my children in general hospital, amen, while the husband goes to work, but she finds something to do to be productive, to, to bring something into the household, amen, uh, uh, to create a, a rich environment, even if they're not rich in finances. There's something to be said for a good woman. Amen, somebody. I can't speak for all the brothers in here, but I've been blessed with the best. Amen. My wife, the mother of my child. Amen. When a mother gives birth, the immaterial made tangible becomes visible and valuable. The thing that was unseen, that incubated inside of her that she took care of that she nourished amen that, that she supplied amen a, a, a stream of nourishment for ah uh, it, it's going to come out into the world where it can be seen and, and having entered into the realm of sight being manifested in the light um, that which is birth is celebrated or in other words when mama have the baby everybody get happy now, we were excited when we found out that she was pregnant. But there's a different level of joy when you can hold a little girl or a little boy in your arms, when you can kiss them on the face and see what has been produced. Every mother is looking forward to that time of final production. I ain't never heard no woman say she wanted to stay pregnant forever. Most time they're saying, get this thing out of me. <laughs> Amen, somebody. See, because if you're going to incubate, the purpose is to bring something forth. We all want to be productive. And I would venture to say God wants your life to bring forth. Uh, there might be something incubating in your soul even right now. Uh, God is growing an idea. He's growing a thought. He's growing a ministry. He's growing a purpose and a destiny inside you right now. Uh, and his plan is not for you to remain pregnant forever. Uh, God didn't make anybody to sit on the pew and keep on getting ready and getting ready and getting ready and getting ready and never getting there. If God has put a song down inside your soul, uh, you can only practice singing around the house so long before eventually you're going to have to open up your mouth and sing it for the world to hear you. If God has put a preach down in your soul, uh, you can only sit and study so long before you got to tell somebody about Jesus. Uh, even if you can't get in the pulpit and preach the word, uh, you can preach it outside on the street corner. Uh, but God has put a power on the inside of you and he wants to see that thing come to fruition. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. And we celebrate when we see God's purpose 
come out of the darkness and into the light. When we see it come into the realm of the visible, the observable, the tangible, we celebrate when that baby is born. But before that which is birthed can be celebrated in the world of the light, it must first be developed in the darkness. The darkness of a mother's womb is a world of chaos. Nothing can be seen. Nothing can be set in order by man because only God is control. Only God is in control of what is happening in the womb. Amen, somebody. Uh, if we could control it, there would be no babies born breach. If we could control it, there'd be no babies born with the umbilical cord wrapped around their neck. But you can't order what's happening on the inside. Only God can do that. God is in control of what's happening in the darkness of the womb. Now, for the first few months, there is no outward evidence that something is being developed on the inside. Often, we can't tell when a woman is pregnant in her first few months. Matter of fact, a lot of ladies are surprised their own selves in the fourth, fifth, or even sometimes sixth month. I saw a TV show uh, a few years back where women were giving birth who didn't know they were pregnant until they were giving birth. Hard for me to imagine how that's possible, but I'm not a woman. I'm not going to try. The process of something being developed in the darkness of the womb causes a mother a tremendous amount of discomfort. Nausea, being stretched out of shape, exhaustion, physical and emotional distress. This is why we ought to be thankful if we even made it to the point of being born. See, because before you even got here, you already then gave your mama some trouble. She already had to go through with you just to bring you out of the darkness of the womb and into the light. We've often already made our mothers miserable before they arrived at that joy of being able to see our faces. I don't know, but I've been told that all of the pain and the stress and the worry and the discomfort, I've been told it, it disappears at the moment when you see that baby born. I've been told. Amen. But a season of darkness in your life can have similar effects to when you have something developing in the darkness of the womb. What do you mean, preacher? I mean that when you're going through a dark season in your life, it can stretch you out of shape. Yes, sir. When you're going through the dark seasons of your life, you can experience exhaustion, physical and emotional distress, depression. How many of you understand that if you have an emotional sickness, it can even make you physically sick. You know what I mean by a dark season in your life? I'm talking about a season when it seems like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. When you find yourself in a dark place, when you're having what seems like an everlasting pity party, brother and sister so-and-so, they bless, and God then left me behind. Brother, sister, brother and sister so-and-so, they, they got plenty, but I'm digging through my sofa trying to get nickels together so I can have something to eat. 
uh, brother married sister, and here I am still all by myself. Dark seasons, feeling like nothing's going right. You ever went out of the frying pan and into the fire? Bills was already overdue, and then you fooled around and got laid off. A dark season in your life. Seem like you don't have any friends. Seem like your own family rejects you. Nobody wants to deal with you. Nobody cares about the tears that you're crying. I've even seen the place where I'm praying, and it, it feels like God doesn't even hear me. All of us experience dark seasons in our life. And you know, the one thing about that is you always feel like you're the only one. Because we all come in here with our suits on and smile and say, praise the Lord and act like everything's wonderful. But I promise you, if you're in a dark season right now, you're not the only one. You are not alone. But these things can be draining. Listen, I've had to fight with depression. And I know when, you, when you're depressed, you physically don't feel like doing anything. You, you feel like you almost can't get out of bed. You don't even, you don't want to open the blinds. You don't want to turn on the light. Amen. You ever just lay in the bed and say, God, couldn't you just take me now? Why do I even have to stay here? In the darkness of a mother's womb is where a child grows the internal organs that are needed to sustain life in the outside world. And likewise, it's in the dark times that God is developing in you the intestinal fortitude to endure the attacks of the enemy. Just like that baby in the, in the chaos of the mother's womb is being prepared for another level, for another dimension. So are we when we are going through our tough time, through our dark season. It is not because God has left you, but it is because God has chosen you. It is, it is because God has decided that I'm going to build you into something that is stronger than what you are now. I, I want you to understand everything we go through in this Christian journey will not be pleasant, but it is for the making of you. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. He is developing something in your darkness. In order to be able to endure, you have to go through something. That's what makes you stronger. A person who is of a weak mind, a person who wants to give up all the time, that's often because everything has been handed to them. And so when they come up against somebody saying no, when they run up against a brick wall, when they run up against a blockade, they don't know how to handle it. But if you've been through something, ah, let me tell you something right now. Uh, I'm not afraid of being uh, without a few dollars because I've been without a few dollars. Uh, we have been the ones who were digging through our sofa to figure out how we were going to feed our daughter. You understand what I am saying? Uh, we've had to eat ramen noodles for weeks at a time. We had to sit in the darkness and just entertain ourselves by just loving one another. Amen. Uh, oh, we've been there up in a house with no heat. Ah, uh, me, my wife, and my daughter bundled up in the bed under the blankets trying to stay warm. I know what it means to go through. Uh, but because I've been through, uh, I'm not afraid to go through. Uh, because Jesus brought me out on the other side. Uh, and he made me stronger for it. Uh, if you know you've been through something, uh, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Uh, I came out on the other side. Thank you, Lord. God is developing something on the inside. And he's using the darkness 
to make you into a warrior of the light. In the darkness of a mother's womb is where a child develops all the basics that we look, that we look for to indicate general health. You know the stuff we look at when the baby comes out. Two eyes, two ears, ten fingers, ten toes. All these things develop inside the womb. You can't see it being prepared. All you can do is witness to it. When it comes out, then you can see the fruit of it. Two eyes, two ears. We count ten fingers and ten toes. Uh, well, everybody wants to be powerful in the spirit. But the truth is prophetic sight a prophetic ear, the wherewithal to utilize spiritual authority is born through pain and bitterness. It's called the costly anointing. Uh, I know you want to go down the aisle and have the pastor lay hands on you and transfer that anointing, but I want you to understand. Uh, uh, you, can get a, a, you can get a measure. Uh, but the fullness of the anointing that God designed for your life, now, nah, baby, you're going to have to pay for that yourself. Uh, you're going to have to go through something to become what God is calling you to be. Uh, you think T.D. Jakes just woke up one day and became the pastor of thousands? No. Uh, he had to go through a whole lot. Uh, he had to suffer through poverty himself uh, in order to get where he's at. Uh, you think Juanita Bynum just woke up one day and became a powerful prophet? Uh, no, she had to suffer rejection. Uh, she had to suffer abuse. Uh, she had to go through to become what God was calling her to be. Uh, and God wants more out of you than what you are today. Uh, and God wants more out of me than what I am today. Uh, so I want you to understand even right now, you're going to have to learn how to endure hardness uh, as a good soldier. Uh, but count it all joy uh, because God is on your side. Uh, and he has a destiny and a purpose for your life. Uh, somebody put your hands together and say, thank you, Lord. Ah, uh, it's born through pain and bitterness, uh, emotional and mental suffering, uh, uh, prophetic vision, uh, being able to hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, that's not just because you joined the church. Uh, it's developed in the season of your darkness. Uh, but uh, if through it all, uh, you learn how to trust in Jesus. Uh, you learn how to trust in God. Uh, you will walk right out of victimhood uh, and into continuous victory. Uh, somebody say, stay the course. Uh, the devil wants you to quit, but stay the course. The devil wants you to wave a white flag, but stay the course. Uh, the enemy wants you to turn back, but stay the course. Uh, the devil wants you to be afraid of the darkness, but stay the course. Uh, stay on the path that God has put you on, uh, and you will walk right into continuous victory. Uh, your prophetic anointing, uh, your spiritual might, um, is developed in the darkness. Uh, and that's why we can rejoice uh, even when we're going through. Because uh, I know I'm not just going in, uh, but I'm going through. Because uh, Jesus is going to bring me out uh, on the other side. Uh, somebody say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> when Joseph, listen to this. Uh, when Joseph uh, was engaged to Mary, <laughs> realized that something was developing in the darkness of Mary's womb and knowing that he had not deposited anything there. Controversy. He knew that there was something growing on the inside of Mary. But he wasn't the one who put something there to grow. Scandal. 
He knew that something was going to come forth. And whatever it was, it wasn't going to look like him. Embarrassment. When he knew that she was getting ready to bring forth a child, the Bible said that she had not known a man, so, he, so we know that he had not yet laid with her. He could have had her stoned to death. It's what the law called for, if you're engaged to a woman and she comes up pregnant, and you know good and well, you ain't touched her, you could have her stoned to death. But, it's the compassion of Brother Joseph. The compassion of Brother Joseph compelled him to send her away privately as to save not only her life, but he also saved her reputation. You know what it is to send young pregnant girl away. Well, th those of y'all that is my age and up, y'all know what that is because back in the day, if you showed up pregnant out of wedlock, they'd send you down south with your grandmama or your cousin, somebody. Right. Amen. Saving the reputation of the family. Well, it was even worse back then because not only would they talk about you, look at you funny, but they'd take you out in the middle of the courtyard and throw stones at you until you were dead. So Joseph, Joseph, Saved her life and her reputation. Joseph, though, listen, he was heartbroken. So he prepares to send away the love of his life. Girl, you didn't got pregnant? I can't believe it. I thought we said we was going to be together forever. I thought we had something special. We made all these wonderful plans. I gave you a ring. I went away to prepare a place for you. And while I was gone in my father's house building many rooms on for you, you down here messing around and acting a fool. There's a whole second sermon in there somewhere. So he prepared to send away the love of his life. But God, God intervenes by sending an angel with a divine message. Verse 20 of our text says, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Ah, he said she's not guilty of fornication. Sister Mary hasn't cheated on you. But there's something divine going on here. That which is developing in the darkness of her womb is something that has been arranged by God Almighty himself. Listen, the darkness that you're in right now it may be an embarrassment. Sometimes you'd like to put your own self away secretly. You ever wish, you ever wish you could just be done with your own self? I mean, seriously, you have just been disgusted with your own self. Like, what is wrong with me? I was raised better than this. I know better than this. I have done better than this. I talked about people who did this, and now here am I in this. I can't believe me. I wish I could get away from my own self. I'm embarrassed to be called by my own name. You ever thought about leaving town and starting over? You know what? I should just move to Indianapolis. No, that's not far enough away. I know some folk in Nap. I ought to move 
to Nashville. I don't know too many people in Nashville. You know what? I, that's not far enough away. You know, I, I ought to pack up and disappear in the middle of the night and just pop up in San Francisco somewhere. Don't not a soul know me and I can start over with a fresh name and a fresh reputation. You ever messed up so much on the same thing? You, you couldn't even find the words to pray. Lord, I want to say please forgive me, but it seems ridiculous to me for me to even ask you again to forgive me for the same thing I just asked you to forgive me for 10 minutes ago, but Lord, I done did it again. If I was you, I wouldn't even forgive myself, but I need your forgiveness. So Father, I'm asking you one more time, let the blood cover me. You ever just been tired of your own self? The angel informed Joseph that that which was being developed in the darkness of Mary's womb is of the Holy Ghost. That which is being developed in your darkness. Uh, see, we have this conception that once we get filled with the Holy Ghost, we're supposed to be perfect from that very moment. Now, perfection is our goal. But I want you to understand, the light is not how God grows you. Uh-huh. He's developing you in the darkness to get you prepared to live in the light. So even though we're trying to walk away from every form of darkness that we can, don't let yourself become discouraged because you messed up again. Just understand that this mess up is a setup for my step up. Because then I can look back and I can remember what he brought me out of. And when I look at the things that's ahead of me, I know my God is bigger than every trouble that's in front of me. Because he brought me through every pain that's behind me. And instead of letting my pain imprison me, I'll let my pain empower me. Because I was developed in the darkness. So I'm no longer afraid of anything that goes bump in the night. Because uh, never I came out of the night. Uh, I was born in the darkness. Uh, and now I'm walking in the light. Uh, but I've got the power of the God. Uh, the God who loved me even in my darkness. So he shall enough love me walking in the light. Somebody put your hands together and say, thank you, Lord. Do not be dismayed. Uh, do not be discouraged. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For that which is being formed in you is of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you don't have to run off and start over again somewhere else uh, because sooner or later everybody's going to see uh, that that which is being formed in you is of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you might have made a boo-boo out of yourself. Uh, you might have bumped your head in front of everybody else. Uh, if they talking about you, let them talk. Uh, their opinion don't mean a hill of beans anyhow. Uh, the only one that got an opinion that counts uh, sits on the throne in heaven. Uh, and he can raise you up uh, right here where you are. Uh, I won't run from my past. Everything they said I did, I did it. And ten times more. Uh, and he still loves me. Listen to this. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4 says, And not only that, um, but we also glory in tribulations. Uh, he said we also glory in tribulation. You know what that means? That means we rejoice. We praise God. We clap our hands. We pat our feet when we're going through our trouble. Why? Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character. And character brings forth hope. Uh, or in other words, Paul said to the church in Rome, uh, it's the things that you go through uh, that create the person that you're going to be. Uh, it's the things that you have suffered uh, that qualifies you to be a servant uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but because I've gone through, uh, I've learned the meaning of perseverance. Uh, if you hand me everything on a silver platter, I wouldn't know what it means to stand still and wait for the salvation of the Lord. 
but because I had to go through, uh, I know that my God will bring me out. I know that my Jesus has never left me, uh, and he never will. Uh, somebody say, yes, Lord. God is using your disappointment. God is using your pain. God is using your test, your trials, and your tribulations to build godly character in your inner man. Just like the baby in the womb has his inner functions developing. He's got to develop a heart and kidneys. He's got to develop a liver and lungs. God is developing the character of your inner man in the darkness of your life right now. So don't be discouraged about where you're at. Baby, just understand you're in the womb. But when your time comes, God is going to birth you forth into the light. And when you come forth in the light, we're going to celebrate as a new baby, as a new creation, as a new creature. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things, all things, all things have become new. I don't have to be how I was anymore. I don't have to think how I thought anymore. I don't have to talk huh, how I talked anymore. Huh. I don't have to behave huh, how I behaved anymore. Huh. But I was developed in the darkness huh, so I can shine huh, in the light. Huh. Shine huh, for the glory of God. Huh. Shine huh, with the forgiveness of God. Huh. How do you shine? Huh. You let the glory of Jesus huh, be made manifest in you. Has God uh, forgiven you? Uh, you shine uh, by forgiving someone else. Uh, has God been patient with you? Uh, you shine uh, by being patient with somebody else. Has God been merciful to you? Uh, you shine uh, by being merciful to somebody else. Uh, this little light of mine, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I'm going to let it shine huh, all in my home. Huh, I'm going to let it shine huh, all on my job. Huh, I'm going to let it shine. Huh, I was made to shine. Huh, I was designed to shine. Huh, I was developed in the darkness huh, to shine bright huh, like a diamond huh, and let the whole world huh, know Jesus. Huh, Somebody say yes. Yeah. Listen to me. Your spiritual life, your spiritual life is being developed in the darkness. Uh, uh, I could go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible. Because I want you to understand God does things the same way throughout all time. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Even in the very beginning, God was moving to fulfill his purpose in the darkness. He started with darkness before he said, let there be light. So I'm not discouraged because I understand before God can get light out of my life, he's got to bring me through the darkness before he can separate the waters above from the waters below. He had to bring us through darkness. But before he can separate your new mind huh, from your old mind, huh, he's got to bring you through darkness huh, before he can separate you huh, from selfishness. Huh. He's got to bring you through darkness huh, before he can separate you huh, from violent tendencies. Huh. 
He's got to bring you through darkness. Uh, but yet, uh, you are being developed uh, in the darkness. Uh, somebody say, yes, Lord. I won't be afraid huh, of the enemy's schemes. Huh. I understand that my character huh, is being developed huh, in the darkness. Huh. I won't be dragged down by depression huh, because I understand that my joy huh, is being developed huh, in the darkness. Huh. I won't be overwhelmed huh, by oppression. Huh. I understand huh, that the strength of my liberty huh, is developed in the darkness. Huh. Your deliverance huh, is developed in the darkness. Huh. Your healing huh, is developed in the darkness. Huh. Your fortitude huh, is developed in the darkness. Huh. Your godliness huh, is developed in the darkness. Huh. Your patience huh, is developed in the darkness. Huh. Your ministry uh, is developed in the darkness. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever uh, the Lord uh, is going to do in your life uh, is developed uh, in the womb of life uh, under the cover of darkness. Uh, the devil himself uh, is just a pawn in God's plan. Uh, but if you keep on playing uh, according to God's rule, uh, at the end of the game, huh, you'll have the devil in checkmate. Huh. Somebody say yes. Yeah. I just came to tell you today, don't be discouraged. You don't have to give up. God is working to birth something in your life. Whether you have a physical womb or not, God is working to birth something in your life so that he can be glorified and we can celebrate you in the light. And everything you've been through, you will look back on the other side and see it was worth it all. Because I couldn't get to where God has me to be if I wasn't developed in the darkness. If you receive that word, somebody put your hands together and say, thank you, Jesus.